Welcome to the Possibility Action Network podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Middleton, AKA Possibility Man. We are committed to bringing you guests who strive to better people's lives and who serve as a force for good in the world. Today we have Dr. Bertha W. McCants. Dr. McCants has the founder of two businesses is a national speaker, teaches leadership strategies, is an executive coach, is the founder of Change Narratives Coach University, Dr. McCants. You've been busy. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome. I am. Thank you for having me. And I am so honored and humbled to be your special guest this afternoon. Oh, that's wonderful. Hey, Dr. McCants, I've been looking at your book, uh, Lead Your Imagined Life. And I want to ask you said something in this book that that touches me, that I, and perhaps it'll get you into how you grew into you, but you wrote, this book is a part of a healing voice for me. It's the story of Bertha, the little girl, the little six-year-old girl who had a vision. What, what are you trying to tell us? Wow, yeah. yeah. Um, well, when I wrote that book, I was going through um, a career transition from K-12 education and um, just not knowing exactly what I was going to do and um, just had so many emotions. So I decided to write it down. I've always liked to journal. And so I just decided to get all of my feelings out and on paper. So. Um, that book was a part of the me transitioning from teaching or being a part of the kindergarten through 12th grade educational system to becoming an entrepreneur educa uh, educator. Didn't know what was possible, but I just had to um, to get my feelings out. That's so fantastic. It was very instrumental. That's fantastic. I don't want to go deep into that because mm -hmm. as I look at your bio, you grew up in rural Lee County, South Carolina. Uh, and of course you went, you know, probably began your education at segregated schools. And then mm -hmm. from there, college, then teacher, and then principal, and then a superintendent in your county. How does a kid who grew up in the rural South do that. Can you walk us through and you know, and also be earned a doctorate? Can you talk, walk us through that? Yes, actually, um, you're right. I did uh, begin my education in Lee County. I actually graduated from high school in Lee County, and I my first job as a teacher was actually out of state. Hmm. My goal was always to come back home to help um improve increase enhance the educational system in my own county so i will say that each move back because when i moved back to south carolina after teaching in georgia i came back and i taught in a neighboring district but i moved back to my county lee county and each move was a decrease in salary and um, I don't think I've ever put that out there, but um, <laughs> oh. I, I wanted to be a part of the change there. I knew that I just believed that I could make a difference. I always wanted to be a teacher. Um, you know, as I've said several times on other um, outlets that I've wanted to be a teacher since I was six years old. So that's where that statement in the book came from. Mm -hmm. well, a little girl who was six years old always saw you know that there was something bigger in people you know i always had a desire to help and an anxiety a desire to teach and so when i did decide to become a teacher i wanted to teach in my district um and i did and um then went on into administration you know, as an assistant principal and as a principal in my district. And um, 
So when I was in the principalship, I left and I went to the district office and um, got an opportunity to become an assistant superintendent where my assistant superintendent um, was leaving to become an, a superintendent. She asked me to join her and be a part of her team. So I became an assistant superintendent in another district and got to, um, you know, work on both sides as um, a couple of years as a curriculum and instructional superintendent and had the honor to um, work in human resources. And a part of that was a part of my um, areas of responsibilities there was professional development. Mm -hmm. I always saw professional development as a way to make changes. And so we use that platform to um, to bring in trainings for every level of staff members within the district. And that's when I started also, well, may have started before then, I started um, just presenting at conferences and I just saw that trainings well, the, your show is the poss is possibilities, and I always just think that anything is possible. If you're willing to take massive actions and put in the work, anything is possible. So I saw training as a way to make those possibilities a reality, and then went on to work at the um, at the Department of Education on the state level, um, helping principals, mentoring principals across the state and then um, got the opportunity to become a superintendent. And that's when I left education. I retired after um, a year of being interim and six years as being a superintendent. Uh -huh. That's fantastic. Now, okay, so let me get this. You could have, you know, you know teacher, uh, principal, superintendent, both at the state level, local level, you could have simply simply get your rocker. <laughs> you know, that's a great <laughs> career, but you continued on. What was the urging to, maybe you've already told me, but I want to probe it a little more. What was the urging to, to continue on? Well, um, when I retired, I wasn't even 50 years old. Okay. And, um, and I always had that inkling to, to help others. I knew, that there was something more inside of me. Mm -hmm. And um, when I retired, you know, I still had three years on my um, superintendent's contract, but because of health issues, I knew that I had to retire. So um, I retired basically to save my own life. You know, I, I, I believe in um, listening to your inner voice mm -hmm. and the title of my book that you mentioned earlier is Lead Your Imagined Life by having the courage to listen to your heart. And I think of your heart as just your intuition, your gut feeling. Um, and so I did, I had the, the intuition, I heard it the year before, and I actually did not listen. I went back and during that last year of the superintendency, I became very ill. And a lot of it was emotional and mental as well as physical. And um, so when I retired during that time, I had, I had, you know, downtime. I had time to heal my physical body and just to heal my mind. Then I start, I wrote the book and I realized that with my desire to help others, I didn't have to do it from the traditional K-12 platform. Mm -hmm. So I researched and I found out that I could still teach online. So wow. that's when I um, decided to lean on professional development mm -hmm. to create this possibility in my life of being an online educator. So that's where it started. It started because of me when I left K-12 education having that downtime just to reflect and reconnect with that little girl and my and my own um my own inner self yeah. to understand that just because I wasn't teaching or uh, affecting change in K12 I could still impact and um affect 
change in people's lives. And I decided to do it worldwide and not just within the confines of a district in which I was working in. That's fantastic, Dr. B. And I tell you, I, I love your ability to be transparent. You know, you mentioned your health. Um, so, and, and I want to ask you because a lot of people out here are transparent. <laughs> you know, they mm -hmm. yeah, just are. Where mm -hmm. did that that um, that that ability, that temperament, to just open up with the public and say, you know, I had health issues that I had needed to needed to address. I mean, where does that come from for you? Has it always been there? This this openness, this transparency. Um, you know. That's a great question, Dr. Milton. Um, I don't know if it's always been there, honestly. I've um, always believed in helping people. And I think um, it became stronger when, uh, when I had that time, that time to reflect. And just knowing that we help people by letting them know that they're not alone, that there are other people out there who are going through the same things that they're going through. And I share my story more so now. And, you know, I've started sharing the story from poverty to K-12 superintendent to educational entrepreneur, because when you just say that you were a superintendent and then an entrepreneur, and I really share, you know, how to be a profitable entrepreneur, not just to be in business, to be in business. You know, I don't want people to think that I had to hook up. Because I sure, <laughs> uh, and a lot of people I talk to say, well, you can do it because you have three degrees or you no, you don't have to have any degrees. You just have to tap into the purpose that God created inside of you. And when you say, where did that come from? You know, and when I say, listen to my intuition, and I heard that first year that I was supposed to leave, I've always had a gift to hear, mm -hmm. to hear. And um, I'll even say a God-given gift to yeah. just be the best and just to know what I'm supposed to do. Now, <laughs> I share it because I was dis disobedient and I need people to understand that no matter where you are, you can, the possibility is there for you to change your narrative, to be whatever you want to be. So I that's the name of our university, as you see back here, yeah. is Change Narratives Coach University. I share it because, you know, sometimes you can be untouchable. Like people think, oh, you just got it like that. And you, you were a superintendent and yeah, you can do it. No, I still had to work extremely hard in the entrepreneurial world to um, for my story to evolve. When I first started out in the life insurance business, just went there and I sat in trainings after trainings at over a year and no one knew what I did before. I didn't even share my story of what I had done in a previous life because I wanted to um, learn all of the steps. I wanted to um, be a student of the of entrepreneurship and then when i decided to take it from life insurance and online i did the same thing so mentorship and coaching has been my vehicle for change but going back to the your question on transparency i believe in telling my story so that people will understand that it doesn't happen overnight yeah you can change your narrative anything is possible you can go where you want to go and i believe that there should be no judgment zones it's like mm -hmm. you know there's no judgment we all start where we are just start where you are pick up the biggest thing is what happens here your mindset i love it dr b said that i can do it then that's the biggest thing so i want people to know that if i did it then you could do it too. But if I never share my story and if I'm not transparent, then we keep a lot of people in the darkness. In darkness. So I want to give hope. I want to spread hope. Wow. It sounds like you are an associate in the Possibility Action Network. But you know, <laughs> uh, what I love about what you've just shared, Dr. B, is that one can tell a story as a cup of sorrow 
Mm -hmm. you know, or one can share a story in service. And what I hear you say is that you share your story in service to others as a way to inspire them to see their possibilities. That's, that's brilliant. But I want to go, now you're an educator. I'm a former educator as well. And educators typically are not entrepreneurs. So can you identify, maybe you've already told us when you were touched by this entrepreneurial bug that you knew, you know, of course you're still a teacher, but it's also entrepreneurship. Can you identify that moment and how that evolved for you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it evolved, the entrepreneurial bug evolved the moment that I got my life insurance license. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, during my transition into retirement, mm -hmm. just some, you know, some business that needed to be settled. And um, what I realized is that in retirement from the state, you could take your health insurance, this health insurance um, at the same rate that you were paying. But for the life insurance, um, it actually, the rate tripled what I was paying as a full-time um, school district employee, it tripled. So I had to find another method. And as I was researching, I realized, you know, I've allowed a lot of life insurance producers to come into the district and talk to staff, but I realized I didn't know very much about it. And as I was talking with one of my colleagues who I had worked with for a while in the life insurance industry, he actually, um, <laughs> to be honest, he was interested in my husband coming on and joining his team because my husband was already in sales. So in my mind, I kept saying, why is he saying that? I had no idea that that was connected to sales. Mm -hmm. so, um, I went to life insurance school. So I asked him, I said, well, how you asking my husband, well, how do I do it? I want to learn more about it. I want to learn more about the business because I think that more people who are retiring need to know because, you know, I always thought that I, as an educator, I just believe in educating people to avoid them from, you know, circumstances, issues, pitfalls, hardships that I may have gone, might have gone through. So I went to life insurance school um, Monday through Monday through Thursday. It was an eight, eight to five. And so I registered to take the the exam because it was it was the same process as becoming a certified teacher. So you had to become licensed. So I I took it that Friday and I became licensed. It, your score comes up immediately whether you pass. So I called him and he said, "You pass?" I said, "Yes." <laughs> and so I started going to meetings um, with him. Same thing as a, as an educator in the school system. Once you get your license, you still have to find a school to hire you. So in the industry, it's called appointment. So I was appointed by his company. And then there was a company in my hometown that I saw all the time, never even knew it existed all of my years of living here. Didn't know what it was about. And someone from Baltimore, Maryland, my one of my husband's friends from Baltimore called him and said, well, told him that his wife was newly certified. He said, well, oh, well, you all are, you, you all are at the headquarters. You know, your town is the headquarter. This is a multi-million dollar company right there in your town. So one day I went by and talked with someone. And um, when I was talking, when I talked to them, they invited me to come to meetings and I looked at their system first, came to what we called an opportunity meeting and listened. And the president of that area, well, actually, they call them directors of the Southeast area of six states was a teacher. Hmm. So of course that struck me. And then when I went to the meetings and I started learning about, you know, I went ahead and um, uh, <clears throat> became appointed with them. So when I went to the meetings, 
and learning about sales and learning about the possibilities of passive income um, was just foreign to me as an educator. So the entrepreneur bug, ooh, <laughs> I just kept swelling and swelling. Right. <laughs> That's you know how you, you get bitten and it's just a little, um, a little bump. So it kept growing and growing and growing. And so I learned the system. I actually was, you know, I, I'll tell, you know, agents all the time that, you know, don't look at where I am now. I took the time to learn. So every Friday morning I was sitting in a class Monday through Thursday, I was going down dirt roads. I and I didn't do the online sales at that time. I was knocking on doors and and talking to people and actually educating them, educating them on the benefits of life insurance coverage. I, was, I went into schools and educate them and told them my perspective from an educator, and also went into senior citizens, the daycare centers, to tell them about the benefits. So I, I've always been educating, but just from different platforms. But when by sitting in the meetings, my entrepreneur spirit grew because um, I I used the analogy, I was like a fly in buttermilk. I, you know, I had to keep, keep my head up to keep from drowning because there were so many new terms and just a new set of vocabulary that I had to learn. But yep. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, I mean, I tell you, passive residual income is truly a beautiful thing. So, um, so what 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 do you do when you meet someone who says to you things like, "Oh, I, I don't want to do sales, sales." <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> uh, well, how do you how do you get someone to see that? I mean, sales is just a a conversation with another human being. Right? That's right. Yeah. And say, and I tell them that it's not about sales; it's about serving. Yeah. Sales yeah. is a spot service because whenever there's an exchange of monies, you're you're exchanging something for a service. Whether you're at a restaurant or in a retail store or you know or you know business coaching or life insurance, so it's a, it's an exchange. It's That's right. For service, so I just tell them because I hear it all the time, mm -hmm. especially for me. Oh no 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 no! Yeah. I don't want to sell. I don't want to. sell. Yeah. And I said, you know what? If you have children, they're selling you every day That's for, for sure. what they want. <laughs> That's for sure. And there's no company, corporation, institution, organization, military, or whatever on the planet that doesn't engage in what you just said. You know. Um, so, Dr. B, I, I want you. I want to ask you about Change Narrative Coach University because I just love that. By the way, Change Narrative, I love that. And then coach mm -hmm. university. What do you what, what do you hope to do in this institution? What's your mission and vision for this institution? Great question. Thank you. Um, the mission of Coach Narratives, Change Narratives Coach University is uh, my my core values are around <laughs> um, business customization, showing people how to customize an online training business. So that if they're going through transitional issues to understand that they're not alone and there's an option, that they can change their narrative from retiree or a person who's been overworked or undervalued, they don't have to stay there. Because a lot of times people think that, well, this is a good job. I don't have an option. I don't know what else to do. But there are different options and people can change their narrative. It's their decision. So I, I the first one is about coach business customization, customizing the business the way you want it to look. It could be coaching, it could be consulting, it could be online, it could be building a life insurance agency where you are training, your, you become a manager and you train your agents. So that's the first one, first core value. The second one is sales. Mm -hmm. I had to make that a core value because um, just teaching people the techniques um, to help them to run a business like a top sales agent, wow, top sales person. They have to. I don't just teach, you know, sales, but I teach the selling techniques 
that will help them to develop their business. And once we start addressing that, they can they calm down from just selling, selling, selling. Um, they I help them to understand the wholesale cycle, selling cycle, sales cycle, and understand. And then leadership, or leadership marketing. Um, I don't just teach how to develop one thing. Like some people might want to teach one thing. I teach the full blown online business development system and teach you how to be a leader, how to be the chief executive officer or the CEO of your business, how to make decisions, how to discern what's right for you and what isn't right for your business. Because every opportunity is not an opportunity for you at this moment. It may be an opportunity for you further down the line, but not at this moment. Mm -hmm. And with that, we talk about leadership marketing and how to make yourself available because as, um, or how to increase your reach or your authority. Because as educators, I realize <laughs> so many of us, and I was the same way, um, or, you know, I wasn't even on Facebook when I started because we're private people. And I hear that, well, I'm just private. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. But for people to understand what you're doing, you have to, um, you have to help allow them to, well, give them an opportunity to see what your business is all about. So, and I always tell them, you control what you put on social media. You don't have to put everything there. So we teach them marketing. And the last part is productivity. Productivity. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's just about being effective and efficient. And you can do a whole lot of things. But if you're not being effective in any of those things, mm -hmm. you're wasting your time and you'll never be successful. So we we help them to understand how do you create a balance between personal and professional lives, as well as creating the flexibility where you're not just so stark, stark on one thing that you can't enjoy the business or you just so focus on the business that you can't enjoy the personal lives. So my core values again are sales, I mean, coach, sales, leadership, and productivity. And I want people to understand that if you're in a situation that you don't need, want to be in, or if you want to scale your business or enhance it, you can change your narrative. Anything. Wow. That's beautiful. I know you've mentioned marketing. I'm going to, I got to ask you this. Is there a secret sauce to generating leads or is it just a lot of activity? Is you know, lead generation seems to be something that a lot of businesses sometimes even stall because it's uh, it's not a well, it's not in self intuitive, you know. So, I think that the the for me, I think the secret sauce is having a consistent plan. Uh huh. So different people will do different things because if you are a brick and mortar building, you may want to do different things, or if you online, you're different in what. You, and then the audience that you want to attract determines the type of leads that you want mm -hmm. um, to attract too. Because I remember when I first started with business development, my mentors would always say, "You need to go where your you need to go where your leads hang out." And I kept saying, "Well, hang out." So wherever, whatever the business that you're in, you need to know: is it TV commercials? Is it newspapers? Is it um, sending out your email list? Is it a uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. But there needs to be a system that you will continue to um, repeat and that you will maintain over time. So the secret sauce is having a consist a system that you're going to consistently implement. Having the system is one thing, but consistently implementation is what takes it to the next level. I like that. Okay, my last question, um, Dr. B. Well, gosh, I have one more, but I'll, I'll stick to this one. You know, I've been I have I've been in this space for over a year now. Okay. But you, and maybe this term that I'm gonna ask you about is one that's out there, but you are the first person to express it and really caught my attention. Mm -hmm. And it is the phrase is online authority. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you are you the, did you come up with this? Or is, what does this mean? And, and are you the inventor of online authority as a concept? No, I'm not the inventor. <laughs> Actually, um, one of my mentors was from England. 
And he was the first one that um, I remember going through authority and awareness, just making sure that you are and, and giving some techniques of how do you make yourself an authority in your market? How do you make it? Because before then, I wasn't even telling people, you know, I wanted to teach people, but I wasn't sharing that I had been a teacher or that I had been a principal or that I'd been a superintendent or any of that. And then the second person was uh, my media mentor. And she said, you know, you have to, she said, Dr. B, you have to put yourself out there. You, you, if you're in, you have to show people that you are an authority in your area. And so she gave me some tech tactics, which I was nervous. I did it with my knees shaking to put myself out there. So it's the same as if you are running for an office, you want to let people know that you have experience in, may not have ever been in that office, done that job, but you've done some jobs that will make you um, the best candidate for that job. So you tell them what you are an authority in. What are some of the things that you have done to make people aware of who you are? And so, I, yeah. Okay, I like it. Okay, last question. You know, you are famously known as Dr. B. Do you mm -hmm. recall, you know, like the first or first few times and when this identity really took root for you? Yes, when I my first website, um, I remember, um, I just, I don't know, I just started with Dr. B and it stuck, but I, I did it when I made, was working with my web designer and um, just didn't want to say Dr. McCants because I felt like Dr. McCants was who I was in the K-12 industry. And as I was changing my narrative to entrepreneur, I wanted something else and I didn't want, Dr. M didn't wasn't it yeah. so be just sound a little bit more energetic for me so I, 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 like, <laughs> I like it works for you dr b is just awesome so dr b is there anything else that you would care to share with us that i haven't asked you well again i want to thank you dr mildred i think for inviting me on this awesome platform i think that the work that you're doing is awesome I think that, you know, our works are kind of aligned. I have changed narratives. You have possibility actions and just letting people know that you don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay where you are. Anything is possible. And a couple of my hashtags are, like I said, hashtag no judgment zone and hashtag start where you are. So I, I, I'm honored to be here. I, um, I wish you well as you as you as you continue to bring on more people to enlighten people in the world of listen during these times of um, stress you can change your narrative right. you don't have to stay where you are anything is possible right. and I'd like for anybody who like to talk with me more to reach out I'm at um, you know of course this http colons and that forward slashes but the address is C-Y-N-U dot teachable, T-E-A-C-H-A-B-L-E dot com. I'd love to, um, to connect with you if you'd like to connect with me and see what, what's available to change your narrative. That's wonderful. And I will place the address of your website in the description, wherever this program is shown. Well, Dr. B, it surely has been my joy to be with you today. And thank you again. You are welcome and enjoy okay. the rest of your day. All right. Well, you have been listening to the Possibility Action Network podcast. Today, our guest has been Dr. Bertha McCants, better known as Dr. B. Until next time, good day. <laughs>